So far, we've defined two different concepts that both have the word invertible in them. We have invertible matrices and invertible transformations. Now, what the point of this video is to say is that really these are one and the same, even if they're expressed in different contexts. So, for example, the invertible matrix part, this is an algebraic construct. And the main point of algebraically wanting an invertible matrix was that if I began with a system like AX equal to B, I've left a little bit of a space, then I can go and multiply by that inverse matrix, if it exists, and I get the A inverse multiplying everywhere, and then here's the trick. The A inverse times the A is the identity. And so what the left-hand side becomes is just the X value, and now I've solved my system. What is X? X is A inverse times B. If you have an inverse matrix, you can very, very, very quickly solve the AX equal to B for no matter what B it is, it's just one multiplication by a matrix. Very simple. So that's an algebraic problem, and it's also an algebraic solution to figure out what is the A inverse. For a two by two, we have this little formula that we could obey, that's the inverse of a two by two. And then if it was a higher number of dimensions, you would take a matrix A, you would append an I, you would do row reductions into it was RREF form. And what the I became after you put it into its RREF was the A inverse. So this is sort of the algebraic side. But we also had this really nice geometric side where we could take some two-dimensional plane, for instance, we'd apply some transformation to it, it would go off somewhere, and we would look at that, and we would say that invertible transformations were those where I could undo the process, where there was some other transformation that put everything back to where it began. So what I want to do is I want to prove that these two different things in different domains really are the same. And so there's two sides to this. I want to show that invertible matrix implies an invertible transformation. I want to show that invertible transformation it implies an invertible matrix. My proof has two halves. First half is the direction invertible matrix implies invertible transformation. So how do I begin? I want to imagine that I have a transformation TA. So it's a transformation defined by a matrix A, but it has the property that the A is invertible. That's because I'm starting over here on the left-hand side. Now, I don't have an inverse transformation S yet. I have an inverse matrix A inverse. So what I want to do is I want to find an inverse transformation to the T, and there's an obvious guess. What if I make my guess for the inverse transformation the transformation whose matrix representation is A inverse? So I'm just going to define it and see if it works. I'm going to define my S A inverse this is my candidate to be invertible transformation. And this is just the transformation where it just takes any vector x and multiplies it by a inverse. It seems reasonable. Now, if I want to show that indeed what I have is an invertible transformation, I have to show that if I do t and then s, or s and then t, either way I do it, I take myself back to the beginning. Okay, let's do the one direction. So I'm going to do s of t of x. And in this case, Looking at their matrix representations, the, the TA of X is just multiplication by A. The S sub A inverse is just multipl multiplication by A inverse. And what I get is just A inverse times AX, which is just going to be the identity matrix times X, which is just going to be X. So indeed, when I compose them in this way, I get back the vector X. And then I'll let you check that the other direction is also true. So indeed, either way I compose them, I get back to the beginning this is a good inverse to the transformation t, and so my ta is invertible. So that's the one side. I've managed to show that if it's an invertible matrix, then it's going to be an invertible transformation. But I still owe you the other side. I owe you this one. I start with the assumption of an invertible transformation, and I deduce an invertible matrix. So now what do I have? I've got that ta, some transformation, has an inverse, which I will call sb. But I don't know that the b is a inverse yet. I know that the T and the S, that those are going to be invertible transformations, but I don't know how the A and the B are related. Now, my first claim in this proof is going to be that the TA, if it's invertible, it has to be onto. What did onto meant? Onto meant that no matter what vector you chose in the codomain, you could find something in the domain that would get to it. That's what onto was. Onto meant it hit everything. But indeed, I can sort of construct a way. Let me choose some particular vector B. B is the thing I want to hit. Well, if I then apply my T transformation to the vector that is the S transformation times B, I get the composition. It's T of S of B, and because T and S are their inverses, it just gives me out B. So T of S of B does indeed hit the value B. So this thing is onto. It hits every value B by constructing it in this way. 
Okay, so if the transformation is on to, what does that mean for its matrix representation A? Well, we know things about when matrices are going to be on to and they hit everything. And then if I use as an example the 3x3 three three case, although of course it could be larger, what it meant to be onto in the context of a matrix meant that I could always solve AX equal to B. Or in other words, always solving AX equal to B as we've previously seen in the course is the same thing as saying there is a leading one in every single row. So I have got this, there's a leading one in every single row. But that doesn't quite get me all the way to saying that this is invertible because I have to worry about what's going on in the columns. However, this is an N by N matrix. To have any hope of a transformation being invertible, the dimensions have to match. So it has to have the same number of rows as columns, otherwise you're going to fail the one-to-one -one property at some point in the middle. And so the fact that I've got a leading one in every single row also means I have a leading one in every single column because it's an N by N or a squared matrix. And in that case, the RREF form of this is the identity matrix. And as we saw in our algebraic construction, if I can take a matrix to the identity, then it's going to be invertible. So indeed, we've managed to see both sides that an invertible matrix and an invertible transformation, while the one is algebraic and the other is geometric, they're intimately connected in it that one is invertible precisely when the other is invertible.